Hello? Is anybody listening to me? Hello? They say they don't know why the deputies were there to begin with and have yet to receive an explanation, but say their civil rights were violated. This is in Los Angeles County. This couple had just gone out to pick up some food for their family when they got a frantic phone call from their kids that the cops had shown up and had entered their home. I just dropped everything, the breakfast. He went to the car, I hopped in the car. And when she told me that they were trying to grab her, I turned on that camera. And what she saw on that camera when she turned it on was outrageous. It showed deputies from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department inside her home manhandling her teenage daughter. This is one of those cameras where you can talk to it from your phone and she's trying to get their attention. I was trying to tell them my mom, like my mom's not home. I even like showed them that she's trying to talk to you from the camera, but like they didn't care. This later would be posted by her to a TikTok video and it absolutely went viral. Hello, is anybody listening to me? Hello? 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 I'm calling your watch tonight. Hello? Hello? Your officer, you know I'm talking to the speaker. You need to look up. Hello? Nobody's in there, a parrot, so you guys need to leave. Hello? There also was a camera outside that captured this uh, teenage daughter being detained outside and also the son who can be seen attempting to video record what the police officers were doing and then they grab the son, they take the phone and they take him into custody. The family has since hired a lawyer who seems to be on top of things. They're pushing him towards the wall, okay, brutally. That's unlawful detention in retaliation, violation of First Amendment, Fourth Amendment, and excessive force. Really, really want to pursue justice on behalf of this family who has been so terrified and traumatized. But believe it or not, the cops were not done with this family. They wanted to give this special treatment to all of them. So when the husband and wife got home, from getting the breakfast because they're rushing back. As they pull up to the scene, take a look at what happens to them. Yes. Right. Give me a favor, I need your driver's no, license. Sir. No, no, you yes, you do. You no, sir. No, I'm no, talking to not. my lawyer. I'm at a stop. Nope. I'm at a nope. complete stop. Nope. You nope. actually stop. I need to speak with your watch commander nope. right nope. now. Your watch commander? Yep. Yeah. All right, you're actually gonna step out of the vehicle now. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Don't put your hands on me, nope. sir. Nope. Don't you're put your hands on me. You're being detained. Babe, record this. Here, record this. No, they're detaining my husband. We just walked home. After the TikTok video went viral, the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department spoke up to the media. They said that the videos depicted on social media do not capture the complete sequence of events. Deputies stated that they responded to the area because of a report of a person screaming, arguing, and someone being hit. Deputies had a lawful duty to ensure there were no injured victims and or suspects inside the location, the department said. Deputies arrived after 12.35 p.m. and were directed to an apartment by, quote, concerned citizens. When they made it to the apartment, they noticed the door was left ajar and announced their presence. While deputies tried to explain the reason they were there, the occupants of the apartment refused to comply and were uncooperative, the department said. After several attempts to have the occupants of the residence exit the location to ascertain if anyone was injured inside, the deputies made entry and a use of force against a juvenile occurred, the department said in a statement. They say they don't know why the deputies were there to begin with and have yet to receive an explanation, but say their civil rights were violated. 
So that's their story. This is basically a claim of exigent circumstances. The cops are saying that they arrived at the scene because somebody had called 911 and reported that somebody appeared to be in distress at the address, which they're claiming was the correct address. It was originally claimed by the family, I believe, that the cops showed up to the wrong address. But the cops were saying, no, it was the right address, and we reasonably believed somebody was in distress. So what this is, is a claim of exigent circumstances. Law enforcement needs a warrant to enter your house. There are exceptions to that. One could be consent. Um, another could be exigent circumstances. And that is basically any time there is an emergency. Um, this has been referred to in some courts in the past as the community caretaking exception. But as the Supreme Court of the United States recently clarified, that's really just another type of exigent circumstances. So the cops are saying that they showed up, the door was already open, they had received a call that somebody was in distress at this address, and so they went in. And when they went in, not knowing what they would find or whether somebody was in trouble inside, they had to figure out and um, you know detain the occupants until they figured out whether or not somebody was in trouble. Now, as a civil rights lawyer, what would I do to find out whether or not that's true? Well, first thing I would do is through a public records request, get a copy of that alleged 911 call and hear exactly what it said. Did it specify an address? Or was this an apartment complex and maybe no specific apartment number was given? Who called 911? Specifically, what did they say? How credible was it? So that's going to be very important that we don't know now is specifically and substantively what was said to 911. And then what did the dispatchers relay to law enforcement. There could be a justification for them to enter based on exigent circumstances if they have the 911 records to back that up and if they have the dispatch records to back that up. Now, that doesn't mean that they didn't violate civil rights here because at some point they did figure out that nobody was in trouble inside. Where did that happen? Where did that not happen? At some point they they realized that, all right, there's two teenage kids in this house. The kids aren't asking for their help. The kids do not appear to be in trouble. Yet they're detaining the kids and they make contact with the parents who arrive. And instead of just using common sense here, they just escalate and escalate the situation. It appears that they arrest the father. At some point, even if exigent circumstances did justify the initial entry into the home, that very well could have become unreasonable at any point during this chaos. And it seems, they seem to indicate in their statement that um, they felt bad, like they did something wrong, that use of force um, had occurred against a juvenile. If they just investigated this because there was a TikTok video, and only then did they admit months afterwards that, yeah, they went into, into that house and they used force against a juvenile, it sounds to me like they have a problem. And I would agree with the lawyer that they hired, who I believe was spot on. Not only was there a Fourth Amendment violation um, in the way that they treated these teenagers unreasonably, but there does appear to be a First Amendment retaliation violation when the son attempted to videotape what was going on, and they, uh, the officers appear to prevent him from doing so, put him in handcuffs, and then sort of throw him up against the wall. So as always, thanks for watching. If you like going through these sorts of encounters and discussing constitutional law, especially when cops show up at, at the front door, it's important to know your rights when that occurs. Make sure you subscribe both here and at the blog at thecivilrightslawyer.com. Remember, freedom is scary. Deal with it. I'll see you next time.